Want to speak real Swahili from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at SwahiliPod101.com. Jumbo. Hello. Okay, the first phrase is Jumbo. Hello. Jumbo. Jumbo is one of the most simple greetings in Kenya. Anyone can use it at any time. In fact, we love using it with tourists. Please visit Kenya and just say Jumbo. Habariza asubui. Good morning. Okay, the next phrase is Habariza asubui. Good morning. Habariza asubui. We often wake up tired sometimes in the morning, but it doesn't cost to say Habariza asubui. Good morning. Habariza mchana. Good afternoon. The next phrase is Habariza mchana. Good afternoon. Habariza mchana. You know, in the afternoon when you meet someone, you're like, oh, habari zamchana. Habari means news, so you're trying to ask someone, okay, how is your afternoon? Tell me anything that is happening in your afternoon. Usiku mwema. Good night. Usiku mwema. Good night. Usiku mwema. Good night. Yes, it's time to sleep. I th sometimes look forward to that time, and you know, I, I, I look forward to saying good night to my friends or to my family or to my whatever person who is there. Jina lako nani? What's your name? Jina lako nani? What's your name? Jina lako nani? It's an obvious question whenever we meet with people, especially when you want to know who they are. It's polite to know someone's name, right? Do you like being called by your name? Yeah, that's why this phrase is very important. Jina lako nani? Kua, to be. The first verb is kua, to be. Kua. For example, we can say, Ili kukua katibu mwema, inabidi ujue kuratibu. In order to be a good secretary, you have to be good at organizing. Kupenda, to like. Kupenda, to like. Kupenda. Bila shaka na kupenda. Of course, I like you. That's quite a handy word to use. Kufanya, to do. Kufanya, to do. Kufanya mazoezi, kutakusaidia kupoteza uzido. Doing exercises will help you lose weight. Kusema, to say. Kusema, to say. Nilimfunza mtoto wangu kusema karibu, anapuambiwa asante. Nilimfunza mtoto wangu kusema Karibu, anapuambiwa asante. I taught my toddler to say, you're welcome, when he's told, thanks. Kueleza, to explain. Kueleza, to explain. We can say, ubao meupe, ndilo chombo nzuri cha kueleza kitu cha picha. A whiteboard is a perfect means to explain something visually. Ubao mweupe ndilo chombo nzuri cha kueleza kitu cha picha. Jina lako nani? What's your name? Jina lako nani? What's your name? Jina lako nani? It's an obvious question whenever we meet with people, especially when you want to know who they are. It's polite to know someone's name, right? Do you like being called by your name? Yeah, that's why this phrase is very important. Jina lako nani? Mimi naitwa I'm Mimi naitwa Medina My name is Medina Mimi naitwa Medina Now this is actually an answer to the previous question Jina lako nani what's your name Now you have to keep this in mind that you know if you use this word frequently you'll be able to tell people about your name you'll be able to tell people your name Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Nice to meet you. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Nice to meet you. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Nice to meet you. I mean, it's really polite. I always feel like energized when someone says, nice to meet you. <laughs> it can be awkward when someone says, oh, I did not want to meet you, you know. <laughs> but we rarely hear that. Just use that word, nice to meet you. Habarigani. How are you? Habari gani? How are you? Habari in Swahili means news. And gani means what? 
So what news? Actually, what you're trying to ask here is like, what, what do you have? I mean, what is all about your life right now in a polite way, you know? Then someone will say, Missouri, or it's okay. They will not go on telling you whatever is happening all around, but you know, they'll just say it's fine or not good, you know? So it's an important phrase. Niko salama, asante, nawewe. I am fine, thanks. And you? Niko salama, asante. Fine, thanks. And you? Niko salama, asante means, oh, I'm fine. Literally, that is what it means. I'm fine, thank you. Then you, you take it back. What about you? You are concerned about the person who is asking you, you know? If you just say, oh, I'm fine, thanks. Then you keep quiet, you know? I mean, we do some, that sometimes, but you know, sometimes you want to show concern. So you ask, Nawewe, and you? Tafadhali, please. Tafadhali, please. It's a magic word all around the world. So tafadhali is one of those words that you want to embrace when you visit Kenya. Tafadhali, whenever you're asking a favor, just say tafadhali. Excuse me, tafadhali, tafadhali. That's one great word you need to remember. Kueleza, to explain. Kueleza, to explain. We can say, Ubao meupe, ndilo chombo nzuri cha kueleza kitu cha picha. A whiteboard is a perfect means to explain something visually. Ubao meupe, ndilo chombo nzuri cha kueleza kitu cha picha. Kusikia, to hear. Kusikia, to hear. Kusikia. Kifaru anahisia ya hali ya juu ya kusikia na kunusa. Kifaru anahisia ya hali ya juu ya kusikia na kunusa. The rhino has a good sense of hearing and smelling. Kwenda to go. Kwenda to go. Kwenda. Nataka kwenda dukani. I want to go to the shop. Nataka kwenda dukani. Kujua to know. Kujua to know. Kujua. Pia mimi nafurahia kukujua. Me too. I'm happy to know you. Pia mimi nafurahia kukujua. Kuchukua to take. Kuchukua to take. Kuchukua. Usisahau kuchukua picha yangu tafadhali. Don't forget to take my picture. Usisahau kuchukua picha yangu tafadhali. Kuona to see. Kuona to see. Kuona. Kwa heri ya kuona na. Bye. See you again. Kwa heri ya kuonana unafanya kazi wapi unafanya kazi wapi where do you work to answer this you'll say jijini mombasa again jijini mombasa mombasa is the name of the place jijini means town so if you working in kisumu you'll say jijini kisumu just to be specific i work in mombasa i work in kisumu Ulijifunza wapi Kiswahili? Ulijifunza wapi Kiswahili? Where did you learn Swahili? For that, you can answer by saying, katika swahilipod101.com. From swahilipod101.com. J, unapenda chakula cha Kenya? J, unapenda chakula cha Kenya? Do you like Kenyan food? To answer that, you will say, Ndio napenda. Yes, I love it. Yes, I like Kenyan food. In Kenya, we have varieties of food, and I'm sure you'll like it. The most staple food in Kenya is ugali. Ugali. Ugali is like cornbread. It's made from white flour. White corn flour. It's not very hard. Something like rice, but you know, in the flour form, but cooked. You don't eat the flour, it's cooked. So it's cornbread. Now, you eat cornbread with different kinds of stews. You can eat it with a bean stew, beef stew, name any kind of stew. And then we also have vegetables. I'm sure you'll like it. Try it out. Umeshawai kuwa Kenya. Umeshawai kuwa Kenya. 
have you been to Kenya? You can answer this by saying, Hapana, ni mara yangu ya kwanza. No, it's my first time. This is a very common question to tourists who visit Kenya. So, be prepared, and it will really sound cool if you can answer in Swahili. Hapana, ni mara yangu ya kwanza. He unauza pesa ngapi? He unauza pesa ngapi? How much is this? To answer that, you can say, shilingi kumi za Kenya. Kumi is the price. So, you can keep changing that and say, shilingi hamsini za Kenya. 50 shillings, Kenya shillings. This will be a very useful phrase to use when you're going shopping. Of course, I'm sure you're going to buy souvenirs for your family members back in your country. So, having this word on your fingertips will be very useful. Niwie radhi. Excuse me. Niwie radhi. Excuse me. Niwie radhi. This is a very handy word, especially when you want someone to excuse you for something. Niwie radhi. Naweza angalia mzigo wako? Excuse me. Can I check your bag? Samahani. I'm sorry. Samahani. I am sorry. Samahani. Samahani is also one of those polite words that you really need to remember. It comes handy when you make a mistake. Samahani, nimechelewa. I'm very sorry that I'm late. Nisangapi. What time is it? Nisangapi. What time is it? Nisangapi. Of course, you'll want to know time. If you cannot see, see the time, probably there's no wall clock around, or perhaps your phone is off to check, or perhaps... You forgot your wristwatch. You'll ask your friend, Nisangapi? Msala ni wapi? Where is the restroom? Msalani ni wapi? Where is the restroom? Msalani ni wapi? Now, for real, you may need this word really, especially if nature keeps calling on you, you know? You may want to ask, hey, tafadali, msalani ni wapi? Excuse me, where is the restroom? Subiri kidogo. Wait a moment. Subiri kidogo. Wait a moment. Subiri kidogo. When you're caught up doing something and someone asks for a favor, you may use this word. Just a moment. Subiri kidogo. Hello. Jambo. Jambo. A table for five. Meza watutano. Meza watutano. Absolutely. Kabisa. Kabisa. All right. Sawa. Sawa. Are you all right? Figo. Figo. Are you on Facebook? J, wewe uko na Facebook? J, wewe uko na Facebook? Awesome. La haula. La haula. Bye. Kwa heri. Kwa heri. Bye bye. Kwaheri. Kwaheri. Can I have a bag, please? Waweza kunipa mfuko tafadhali? Waweza kunipa mfuko tafadhali? Can I have a receipt, please? Waweza kunipa receipt tafadhali? Waweza kunipa receipt tafadhali? Can you download this file? J, unaweza ku download file hii? J, unaweza ku download file hii? Check. Kagua. Kagua. Congratulations. Hongera. Hongera. Delicious. Nitamu. 
ni tamu. Do you need anything? Unaitaji chochote? Unaitaji chochote? Do you speak English? Unaweza ongea Kiingereza? Unaweza ongea Kiingereza? Do you understand? Unaelewa? Unaelewa? Does this bus go to? Je, hii ni basi inakwenda? Je, hii ni basi inakwenda? Don't do it. Usifanye hivyo. Usifanye hivyo. Don't mention it. Usikitaje. Usikitaje. Don't worry. Usiwe na wasiwasi. Usiwe na wasiwasi. Everything is great. Kila kitu kiko sawa. Kila kitu kiko sawa. Excuse me. Tafadhali. Tafadhali. Good afternoon. Habari za mchana. Habari za mchana. Good evening. Habari za jioni. Habari za jioni. Good morning. Habari za asubuhi. Habari za asubuhi. Good night. Lala salama. Lala salama. Goodbye. Kwa heri. Kwa heri. Want to speak real Swahili from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at swahilipod101.com. Kujitolea. Kujitolea. To volunteer. Kujitolea. Kujitolea. To volunteer. Napenda kujitolea. Kusafisha mita. I like to volunteer cleaning the streets. Yeah. I volunteered in Tohoku in 2011 uh, after the tsunami earthquake and I know it was a it was an intense experience. Kinga. Kinga. To protect. Kinga. To protect. Kukinga misitu ni jambo la maana. Kukinga misitu ni jambo la maana. Protecting forest is a very important thing. Let us protect our forest for the best of our future. Kutumia tena. Kutumia tena. To reuse. Kutumia tena. To reuse. Kutumia tena kitu chochote ni pendekezo nzuri. Kutumia tena. Kitu chochote ni pendekezo nzuri. Reusing anything is a very good recommendation. Kuhifadhi. Kuhifadhi. To conserve. Kuhifadhi. To conserve. Najua kuhifadhi mazingira. I know how to conserve the environment. Yes, probably I may not be really perfect, but I try to throw the garbage on the right day and in the right places. Do you? Let's conserve our environment and make it clean. Punguza uchafu. Punguza uchafu. To reduce trash. Punguza uchafu. To reduce trash. Mikakati ya kupunguza uchafu ni mingi. Mikakati ya kupunguza uchafu ni mingi. There are many strategies to reduce trash. Very many. One of them is to recycle. In fact, that makes work easier for you. If you don't know how to recycle your clothes, get those recycle shops and just go. Take them there. They'll make work easier for you. Enda ulaya. Enda ulaya. To travel abroad. Enda ulaya. To travel abroad. Naenda ulaya kesho. I'm traveling abroad tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow should come. Sure enough, I'm going to Canada tomorrow. Where are you going? 
I'm going abroad. Kupumzika katika bichi. Kupumzika katika bichi. To relax at the beach. Kupumzika katika bichi. To relax at the beach. Relax. Feeling good at the beach. Napenda kupumzika katika bichi. Napenda kupumzika katika bichi. I like to relax at the beach. I like to relax at the beach. Really, it's so fun and and summer is coming and the, the beach is right close to my home. So I'm going to have fun. Relax. Jifunze Swahili na Swahili pod 101.com Jifunze Kiswahili na Swahili pod 101.com To learn Swahili with Swahili pod 101.com Jifunze Kiswahili na Swahili pod 101.com to learn Swahili with SwahiliPod101.com. Jifunze Kiswahili na SwahiliPod101.com msimu huu. Jifunze Kiswahili na SwahiliPod101.com msimu huu. Learn Swahili with SwahiliPod101.com this season. Yes, we are having exciting lessons and we'd love to have you learn Swahili with us so that when you go to Kenya or you go to some of those East African countries in Africa, you can speak Swahili with them. It will be amazing and you'll get along with those people. You'll enjoy your time there. Kujifunza kupika chakula cha Kenya. Kujifunza kupika chakula cha Kenya. To learn to cook Kenyan food. Kujifunza kupika chakula cha Kenya. To learn how to cook Kenyan food. Kujifunza kupika chakula cha Kenya. To learn how to cook Kenyan food. Jifunze kupika chakula cha Kenya. Jifunze kupika chakula cha Kenya. Learn to cook Kenyan food. Learn to cook Kenyan food, especially ugali. Try it out. It's quite simple. You get flour, boiled water. You keep adding little by little and stirring until it's a little bit hard. Something like rice. Then eat it with vegetables or stew. I bet you'll like it. Kuanda nyama choma. Kuanda nyama choma. To have a barbecue. Kuanda nyama choma. Kuanda nyama choma. To have a barbecue. Nifunze kuanda nyama choma. Nifunze kuanda nyama choma. Teach me how to have a barbecue. Try it out especially nyama ya mbuzi. Nyama ya mbuzi means goat meat. It's one of the most delicious ones. You may go further and try the crocodile meat. Trying things out, you never know what you like. Miwani ajua. Sunglasses. This really doesn't look like miwani, but it's just an illustration. Miwani ajua. He miwani ajua ni pesangapi. How much are these sunglasses? Ufuo wa bahari, beach. Kunya tutembe kwenye ufuo wa bahari. Come, let us walk on the beach. Kuogelea, swimming. Easy. I don't know how to do it, but you know how to do it. Kuogelea ni moja wapo ya hobi zangu. Swimming is one of my hobbies. Jua, the sun. Leo, jua hii ni kali sana. Jua hii ni kali sana. Today, the sun is too hot. Ooh. Where do I go? Okay, the weather in Kenya and the seasons vary a lot with temperatures ranging from around, it can go from 15 to 30 degrees. 30 degrees is way, way hot. So you may need to get something to protect yourself. Mti wa mtende. Palm tree. Hu mti wa mtende unakivuli mzuri sana. This palm tree has very good shade. You can enjoy it. Okay, actually in Kenya it's not that. In the coastal area it's, it's humid. But in some other places, the shade under a tree when it's hot is the most amazing thing. Very relaxing thing to do. I know you can enjoy that. Get some of those trees around and just relax under them when the sun is shining hot. Mfuko. Mfuko. Backpack. Mfuko. 
backpack huo ni mfuko wangu huo ni mfuko wangu that is my backpack yes i'm ready to go to school that is my backpack mwenzangu darasani mwenzangu darasani classmate mwenzangu darasani classmate juma ni mwenzangu darasani juma ni mwenzangu darasani juma is my classmate did i have juma as a classmate not really but uh, i had many classmates i can't remember but i have good memories of all of you the fun guys the fun ladies i miss all of you and my dedication for this lesson to you my classmates kazi ya ziada kazi ya ziada homework kazi ya ziada homework nafanya kazi ya ziada sasa nafanya kazi ya ziada sasa i am doing my homework now ask me why i am late i'm running late the deadline is in an hour's time and i have a lot to do i am hurrying and so nervous anyone identifies with my experience you should get things going ali mtihani mtihani exam mtihani exam tunafanya mtihani wiki ijayo tunafanya mtihani wiki ijayo we are sitting for exams next week oh time is running time is running i feel like i haven't done enough for that exam only if they could suspend it i'll be so happy but you know what i can't help it but i got to read i got to read oh majira ya likizo majira ya likizo summer break majira ya likizo summer break majira ya likizo nitapumzika kutoka kwa masomo majira ya likizo nitapumzika kutoka kwa masomo During summer break I will take a rest from studies. Anyone as happy as I am? Yeah, and summer break is even longer. What are you going to do? I am so happy. But you know what? Don't forget to get a book and read, even some novel or something like that. You know, studies never end. But I you know relaxing is the point there. Relax and take advantage of it. Fulana. Fulana sweater. Fulana sweater Huwezi toka nje bila fulana Huwezi toka nje bila fulana You cannot go outdoors without a sweater Yeah that's a common voice from our mothers or perhaps your older brother older sister whoever it is but when it is super cold you don't want to get out without a sweater because you don't want to catch cold You know, you know what it means catching a cold in that cold season? Please get yourself a sweater when it's autumn. Kuwa na mvua. Kuwa na mvua. Rainy. Kuwa na mvua. Rainy. Leo ni siku ya kuwa na mvua. Today is a rainy day. Oh, yeah, today is a rainy day. We love rain but not always especially when you when you want to go for a picnic but you know what get yourself an umbrella or if you want to feel the the test of rain hmm, just go out you know actually during my childhood memories we'll never mind about rain <laughs> in fact it was our favorite thing of course not for the very heavy rain that one you might get sick but when it rain we'll jump outside and we're like yeah it's raining we shout to the rain as if it has ears to listen and you know what out there the smell of soil was so good i miss those days because everywhere where i am it's stomach you can't feel the taste the natural taste anyway wherever you are take care take care get your umbrella whenever you're going outside 
kuwa na upepo kuwa na upepo windy kuwa na upepo windy hali ya anga leo ni kuwa na upepo hali ya anga leo ni kuwa na upepo today's weather is windy <gasps> you know what i think i got a practical definition of windy when i came to japan i'm currently living in japan and and there's what we call typhoon i never even knew about it <laughs> when i was young i mean it's it's quite hilarious but it's the truth typhoon almost carried me away i was like what kind of wind is this i mean that was windy for me of course we have it's windy in kenya and sometimes it can be really terrible it carries away rooftops and all that but you know it's it's not so much like typhoon probably now we can differentiate between what windy is and typhoon is hmm. do you get the difference i don't know try and figure it out by yourself kuna baridi kuna baridi cool kuna baridi cool kama kuna baridi uoge na maji moto kama kuna baridi uoge na maji moto when it is cool you should shower with hot water i mean that was so like serious to think of, of of showering with hot water when it's cool i remember in my boarding school it was in a forested area and it was always cold but guess what we will shower with cold water super cold almost like ice and you will not like it but you know what you get out of there shivering but when you get in class you're very alert so it depends on you what you do but you know what take care of your health in whichever case the money the money autumn the money autumn the money he nitanunua kifaa cha joto the money he nitanunua kifaa cha joto this autumn i will buy a heater yes you can but not necessarily in kenya it's way different if you get a heater imagine you'll be wasting money you know save it because in kenya the weather's are, are really good consistent throughout the year it's never that super cold like the winter cold in japan or, or other places you know we don't we don't get to see snow i mean once in a while a miracle happens you know that's what i mean but uh, you don't have to buy a heater you can heat your house in a different way i mean yeah but really not a heater that will be too much yeah for real you you really don't have to buy a heater it's not that cold for a heater you can find different other means of heating your house but not necessarily with a heater save that money yo tarakilishi la paja tarakilishi la paja our first word is tarakilishi la paja laptop tarakilishi la paja paja is your lap laptop asante kwa kunipa tarakilishi la paja asante kwa kunipa tarakilishi la paja thank you for giving me a laptop really i appreciate it i was dreaming of laptops some years back you know technology is changing each each, each and every day and it is it's really I'm not really sure but um it was yesterday while I was thinking about how the world will be in in 40 years to come. I don't know. Maybe there's some there'll be something different from a laptop. Okay, now let's get back um to where I was about laptop. You know, those days when I used to sleep with laptops, I was like, "Oh, oh, I really wish I could have one." Thank you for giving me a laptop. Actually, I got one and <laughs> life is become normal again. I think I want more laptops. It never gets enough. I don't know what. Do you feel something like me? Kitabu. Kitabu. Book. Kitabu. Book. Ningependa kusoma kitabu cha hadithi. Ningependa kusoma kitabu cha hadithi. I would like to read a story book. Kenyans love stories and storytelling. Even before books were invented, Kenyans told stories, and now they are telling stories in writings. We have very famous and popular writers in Kenya. I think of it. Among of, among them include 
uh, who is this? Gugi Thiongo, and one of his books that I like the most is Weep Not Child. Then there's Grace of, Grace of God. And gra with Grace of God, you, you, you learn, I mean, she's gotten into the Kenyan culture and you'll get to know much about the Kenyan culture through her books. The Promised Land is one of those favorite books that I love. There's Binyavanga Hainaina. The name is quite long, but you know what? He's a good writer. In fact, he's, he has a very unique writing that even impressed what Oprah Winfrey, who took it as one of his book clubs to read books. Get to know the Kenyan cultures by checking out these writers and more of them. Ramani Yadunia. Ramani Yadunia. World Map. Ramani ya dunia, world map. Kwa vile unasafiri dunia, shika hii ramani ya dunia. Kwa vile unasafiri dunia, shika hii ramani ya dunia. Since you're traveling around the world, have this world map. Would you like to have a world map as a gift? Which one would you like best? The poster one or the globe? Globe in Swahili is called Ardhi. Ardhi technically means earth because the world is earth. Swahili just took it to translate globe to earth. Ardhi. Camera. 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 Camera he in a toa picha safi kabisa. Camera he inatoa picha safi kabisa. This camera produces clear pictures. Yeah, if you see me clearly, then I just mean it. Simu ya smartphone. Simu ya smartphone. Smartphone. Simu ya smartphone. Smartphone. He simu ya smartphone. Haishi moto haraka. He, simu ya smartphone, haishi moto haraka. This smartphone does not finish charging quickly. Maybe it's time to get a gift as a smartphone. How so cool would that be? You know, before I got a smartphone, I dreamt. I know it was <laughs> one of those dreams that you want to come true. And honestly, when I got one, it was a dream come true. And I appreciate it up to now. It wasn't really a gift, but I really worked hard to get it <laughs> because I wanted it. Yes, it is, it is very convenient, I would say. Smartphones are super convenient, especially in this world and age. I can use smartphone. In fact, when I was at school, I used to write my papers using my smartphone. Sounds strange, but it's true. Whatever I will be going to work, I could write my papers. Woo! Part-time jobbing. Yeah, with papers on the road. Woo! I'll write lots of papers. I'll do my research using my smartphone. I mean, the, it's like the world was with me, right? On my hands. And, you know, I could chat with my family. I could do, you know, you jungle through a number of things at the same time. And your world is just, everything is consolidated. That is very convenient. I appreciate it. It's a dream come true and it's a worthy dream. Worthy dream. It's a high time you get one as a gift. Yeah, I wish you luck. Are you feeling confident as a beginner level language learner? Are you ready to move up to the intermediate level? Here are some tips to help you make that leap and advance your language learning progress. Tip number one. Determine your skill level. It's important to look across your skills in the major language competencies, listening, speaking, writing, and reading. By taking our level assessment test, you can review your skills in each competency and see your strengths and weaknesses. Keep in mind it's normal to be better in some skills than others. Premium Plus users can take our level assessment test and get personalized recommendations and learning pathways based on your results. Once you've figured out which skills need work, it's time to take action. No matter which of your language skills need to be improved, make sure you choose a method that's both effective and fun to help maintain your regular learning routine. Tip number two, listening. 
The most effective way to build your listening comprehension is by building a strong vocabulary. The more vocab you master, the easier it will be to understand the context and details of the conversation. Songs in the target language are a key listening tool that will teach you common, everyday vocabulary. By learning and memorizing the lyrics, you're building up your vocabulary. If you really want your listening skills to take off, listen to our podcasts. We have hundreds of hours of audio lessons for you to listen to. Before you know it, you'll be able to understand shows and movies. Tip number three, speaking. Add speaking elements to your language routine. Try shadowing podcasts, repeating along while you listen. Match the native speaker's pronunciation and intonation. This is a fantastic way to improve your fluency and accuracy. You can also find a partner for conversation exchange. A partner can help correct your mistakes and teach you more natural ways to phrase your ideas. Tip number four, writing. An easy way to start writing more often is by keeping a one sentence journal. Write one sentence in a journal every day. It doesn't take a lot of time and is a great habit for beginners to build a routine. You have to be consistent to make improvements. Ask native speakers to correct your writing to improve even faster. You can submit sentences and phrases to your teacher using Premium Plus. Tip number five, reading. Reading is a skill you can improve by yourself. There's no need to rush. It doesn't matter if you read one or 100 pages at a time. What matters is that you understand what you read. Write down new words as you read them to practice later. If there's an audio version, read along with the narrator. It'll help you read at a slightly faster speed than normal. You can use the audio that comes with each of our lessons. Bonus tip, never give up. Where do your language skills currently stand? Where do you want them to be? How do you get there? Whatever your goal is, make it clear and part of your life. You'll reach it if you stay focused and positive. And if you really want your skills to take off, make use of our tools and resources. They're designed to help you get to the next level in the fastest, easiest, and most fun way. Just click the link in the description to sign up for a free lifetime account. Sign up takes less than 30 seconds. Click the link in the description and start learning right away. I'll see you there. Bye. Want to speak real Swahili from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at SwahiliPod101.com. Yeah, welcome everyone. It's Medina again. Welcome to Swahili Pod 101. Today, we are going to look at the top 25 phrases in Swahili. Let's have fun. Jambo. Hello. Okay, the first phrase is Jambo. Hello. Jambo. Jambo is one of the most simple greetings in Kenya. Anyone can use it at any time. In fact, we love using it with tourists. Please visit Kenya and just say Jambo. Habariza asubui. Good morning. Okay, the next phrase is Habariza asubui. Good morning. Habariza asubui. We often wake up tired sometimes in the morning, but it doesn't cost to say Habariza asubui. Good morning. Habariza mchana. Good afternoon. The next phrase is Habariza mchana. Good afternoon. Habariza mchana. You know, in the afternoon when you meet someone, you're like, oh, Habariza mchana. Habari means news. So you're trying to ask someone, okay, how is your afternoon? Tell me anything that is happening in your afternoon. Usiku mwema. Good night. Usiku mwema. Good night. Usiku mwema. Good night. Yes, it's time to sleep. I th sometimes look forward to that time. And, you know, I, I, I look forward to saying good night to my friends or to my family or to my whatever person who is there. Jina lako nani? What's your name? Jina lako nani? What's your name? Jina lako nani? It's an obvious question whenever we meet with people, especially when you want to know who they are. It's polite to know someone's name, right? Do you like being called by your name? Yeah, that's why this phrase is very important. Jina lako nani? Mimi naitwa. I'm Mimi naitwa Medina. My name is Medina. Mimi naitwa Medina. Now, this is actually an answer to the previous question. Jinalako nani, what's your name? 
Now you have to keep this in mind that, you know, if you use this word frequently, you'll be able to tell people about your name. You'll be able to tell people your name. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Nice to meet you. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Nice to meet you. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Nice to meet you. I mean, it's really polite. I always feel like energized when someone says, nice to meet you. <laughs> it can be awkward when someone says, oh, I did not want to meet you, you know, <laughs> but we rarely hear that. Just use that word, nice to meet you. Habari gani? How are you? Habari gani? How are you? Habari in Swahili means news. And gani means what? So what news? Actually, what you're trying to ask here is like, what, what do you have? I mean, what is all about your life right now in a polite way, you know? Then someone will say, Mzuri, or it's okay. They will not go on telling you whatever is happening all around, but you know, they'll just say it's fine or not good, you know? So it's an important phrase. Niko salama, asante, nawewe. I am fine, thanks. And you? Niko salama, asante. Fine, thanks. And you? Niko salama, asante means, oh, I'm fine. Literally, that is what it means. I'm fine, thank you. Then you... You take it back. What about you? You are concerned about the person who is asking you, you know? If you just say, oh, I'm fine, thanks, then you keep quiet, you know? I mean, we do some, that sometimes, but you know, sometimes you want to show concern, so you ask. Nawewe, and you? Tafadhali, please. Tafadhali, please. It's a magic word all around the world. So tafadhali is one of those words that you want to embrace when you visit Kenya. Tafadhali, whenever you're asking a favor, just say, Tafadhali, excuse me, Tafadhali, Tafadhali. That's one great word you need to remember. Asante, thank you. Asante, thank you. It's also one of the magic words that relates to Tafadhali, please. You know, Asante is like you're appreciating whatever favor you received from someone who did you a favor. So it's also one of those words you, you like to embrace whenever and wherever. Karibu, you're welcome. Karibu, you're welcome. Karibu. Karibu is one of the most common words used in Kenya. For example, when someone knocks your door, you'll say, oh, karibu. That means come in or welcome, actually. Then in some circumstances where someone gives you something, you'll say thank you, right? Now, the person who is giving you will say karibu. Karibu means welcome. So <laughs> it can be a joke, but you know what? You can go and ask them, or you can go and ask as many favors as, as you can, because they said karibu. I mean, that's a joke. <laughs> you don't have to take it seriously though. <laughs> Dio, yes. Dio, yes. Dio. Dio is a response. Whenever someone asks a question, you can say Dio if it's a positive answer, I mean, to the question. I mean, it, it depends. You know, there are the yes, no questions. Yeah, that is where it lies. Dio. Umefika Kenya? Dio. Umekula chakula? Dio. Umefika Kenya means, have you arrived in Kenya? You'll say yes, which is Dio. Have you eaten food? Umekula chakula? You'll say, Dio. Yes. Hapana. No. Hapana. No. Hapana. Hapana is an answer to the yes, no question. Just like Dio. Dio means yes, as we looked at it previously. Now here it's no. Umefika Kenya? Hapana. Have you arrived in Kenya? No. Umekula chakula? Have you eaten food? No. Hapana. Sawa. Okay. Sawa. Okay. Sawa. Okay. Sawa. Sawa is used to acknowledge that you agree to whatever has been said. For example, you can say, Sawa, nimeelewa maelezo yako. Okay, I've understood the explanation. Niwie radhi, excuse me. Niwie radhi, excuse me. Niwie radhi. This is a very handy word, especially when you want someone to excuse you for something. Niwie radhi. Nawezangalia mzigo wako? Excuse me, can I check your bag? Samahani, I'm sorry. 
Samahani. I am sorry. Samahani. Samahani is also one of those polite words that you really need to remember. It comes handy when you make a mistake. Samahani, nimechelewa. I'm very sorry that I'm late. Nisangapi. What time is it? Nisangapi. What time is it? Nisangapi. Of course, you'll want to know time. If you cannot see, see the time, probably there's no wall clock around, or perhaps your phone is off the check, or perhaps you forgot your wristwatch. You'll ask your friend, Nisangapi. Msala niwapi. Where is the restroom? Msalani niwapi. Where is the restroom? Msalani niwapi. Now, for real, you may need this word really, especially if nature keeps calling on you, you know? You may want to ask, hey, tafadali, msalani niwapi. Excuse me, where is the restroom? Subiri kidogo. Wait a moment. Subiri kidogo. Wait a moment. Subiri kidogo. When you're caught up doing something and someone asks for a favor, you may use this word. Just a moment. Subiri kidogo. Beyahini nini. How much is this? Beyahini nini. How much is this? Beyahini nini. How much is this? Beyahi ninini. Now, he there stands for the thing that you want to buy. For example, you can say, Beyahi nguo ninini. How much is this dress? Saidia, help. Saidia, help. Saidia. Saidia! Imagine you're drowning. What will you do? You'll shout, Saidia! Help! When you're in trouble, I mean, this word comes in handy. I think you may want to use it. Tuonane badai. See you later. Tuonane badai. See you later. Tuonane badai. After you meet with your friend, you have a chat with how him, you'll definitely say, bye, see you later, when you're padding. I think it's also in one of those polite words that you may want to add to your list. Kwaheri. Goodbye. Kwaheri. Goodbye. Kwaheri. Goodbye. Kwaheri. Now, Kwaheri reminds me of those toughest moments in my life. You know, when I went abroad to study and my family was back um, in my country, the toughest moments was when we were parting. You know, I will never want to say Kwaheri. I will never want to say goodbye. I will never even want to add it out, but I will just say it with tears rolling down my, my cheeks. Yeah, Kwaheri, it's a good word to use whenever you're padding. Sijui, I don't know. Sijui, I don't know. Sijui. This is a word that you'll, you, you'll use when you acknowledge that for sure you're not sure about the answer to the question or to the situation that is happening at the moment. Some people think it's impolite to say sijui, especially when you're asking for directions. They'll try to give information which might be wrong to show that they are polite. So you got to be careful. Thank you so much for staying with us until the end of this video. Did you enjoy this video? If you did, do not forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to visit SwahiliPod101.com. Kwaheri, see you again. Welcome to SwahiliPod101.com's Kiswahili Kwa Dakika Tatu. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Swahili. Hamjamboni, mimi ni Medina. Shukran kwa kuungana na mimi katika kipindi hii. Hi everybody, I'm Medina. Thank you for joining me. In this series, you're going to learn basic Swahili expressions. It's super easy and it only takes three minutes. And in this first lesson, you're going to learn how to introduce yourself in Swahili. You learn both an informal and formal way to do it. But unlike many other languages, there is not a very big difference between informal and formal speech in Swahili. First, Let's see how Kenyan people introduce themselves in an informal situation. Habari, mimi ni Medina. Ninafuraha kukutana na wewe. Hi, 
I'm Medina. Nice to meet you. Habari. Mimi ni Medina. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Let's break it down. Start with the greeting. Habari. Then, mimi ni, which is followed by your name. Next, say the phrase, Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Nice to meet you. All together, it is, Habari, mimi ni Medina. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. And now, let's see the same sentence in formal speech. Shikamo, jina langu ni Medina Maraka. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Hello, my name is Medina Maraka. Nice to meet you. Shikamo, jina langu ni Medina Maraka. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. So, what has changed from the previous introduction? Let's take a closer look at this together. It's important to note that habari can be used in both casual and formal settings. However, it is more formal and respectful to use the word shikamo, especially when addressing an older person. Shikamo implies good day or simply hello. You will notice that the section mimi ni for I am changes to jinalangu ni medina for my name is Medina. During a formal self-introduction, it is advisable to mention your last name. So, I will say, my name is Medina Maraka. Here, you will say your full name. Finally, Nina furaha kukutana na wewe is the same for both. This phrase means, nice to meet you. One more time. The informal way to introduce yourself in Swahili is, habari, mimi ni Medina. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. And the formal way to introduce yourself is Shikamo. Jina langu ni Medina Maraka. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Now, it's time for Medina's insights. When introducing yourself, it's a good habit to shake hands. Usually, the right hand is slightly supported by the left hand. If you're concerned about politeness, a slight bend forward while shaking the hand adds a sign of respect in the Kenyan business world. However, if you speak too formally, people will think you sound unnatural. In Kenya, simplicity is best. Do you know how to say thank you in Swahili? You learn how to say this and many other words in the next Kiswahili kwa dakika tatu. Thanks for dropping by and see you next time. Kwa heri, tuanane tena! Habari yako? Mzuri sana. Uko mzima? Niko mzima kabisa asante. Hamjamboni. Mimi ni Medina. Hi everybody. I'm Medina. Welcome to swahilipod101.com's Kiswahili kwa dakika tatu. The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Swahili. In the last lesson, we learned how to thank people by saying Asante. In this lesson, we learned some of the most common greetings used in Kenya. Ukotayari, are you ready? Tuanze, so let's get started. The most commonly used informal greeting is Habari. Habari. Habari means hi or hello. We use it when we meet people. We can use this greeting with friends or relatives but also with people we don't know. We used this phrase in lesson one. Do you remember? And do you remember what the formal way of greeting people is? Shikamo. Shikamo. Do you also remember that habari can be used both in formal and casual settings? During the evening, we say, Habari ya jioni. Habari ya jioni. Jioni is Swahili for evening. So, habari ya jioni means good evening. Habari and habari ya jioni are used when we meet someone, but when we leave, we don't say these greetings again. Instead, when living in both formal and informal situations, Kenyan people say kwaheri. Kwaheri. Kwaheri means goodbye. 
Finally, in Swahili, we have an expression meaning see you soon that can be considered both formal and informal. Tuonane tena. Tuonane tena. Now you can greet people in many different ways in Swahili. Let's review them all again. When greeting someone in an informal way, remember to say habari. When greeting someone in a formal situation, you say shikamo. When leaving, in either a formal or informal situation, say tuonane tena. It's easy, isn't it? Now, it's time for Medina's insights. In formal situations, Kenyans commonly greet each other by shaking hands. But if we meet someone we are very friendly with, we hug each other. Don't be afraid to do it with your Kenyan friends. It's normal. In the next lesson, we learn the meaning of the phrase Unongea kingereza. Do you already know it? I'll be waiting with the answer in our next Kiswahili kwa dakika tatu. Until then, tuonane! Hamjamboni, mimi ni Medina. Hi everybody, I'm Medina. Welcome to SwahiliPod101.com's Kiswahili kwa dakika tatu. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Swahili. In the last lesson, we learned the most common forms of greetings in Swahili. Do you remember habari as an informal way of greeting someone? And shikamo, the formal version? In this lesson, you're going to learn a very useful phrase. Do you speak English? If you find yourself in a situation where you need assistance in English, this phrase can be a lifesaver. And because you're asking it in Swahili, you can be sure that everyone will understand what you're saying, even if their answer is no. Here's the informal way to say it. Unaongea Kingereza? Unaongea Kingereza? In Swahili, we sometimes use a one-word phrase that combines the subject and its verb. Unaongea is a good example. Breaking this phrase down further, we have U, which is a pronoun for the subject. Na shows the subject's potential of doing an action. It makes the statement affirmative. Ongea is the verb for speak. Together, we have unongea, which literally means you speak. Saying it with a higher intonation makes it a question. So, unongea means do you speak? Adding kingereza, the word for English, will make it unongea kingereza. This means do you speak English? All together, we have unongea kingereza. Unongea. Kingereza. To learn how to properly construct one word sentences, check out our obsolete beginner series at SwahiliPod101.com. There, you'll find several detailed grammar lessons. We are now going to make this sentence formal. It isn't hard. First, add the word J at the beginning of the sentence. J is a word that prompts a question. The sentence, Unaongea, will change to J, Unawezaongea. Not the extra word weza, which means able. J unawezongea therefore means, are you able to? Let's look at the full sentence. J unawezongea kingereza. Do you speak English? J unawezongea kingereza. Adding samahani, which means excuse me, makes the sentence even more polite. Samahani, unawezongea kingereza. The responses you'll receive could be one of these three. Ndiyo. Yes. Ndiyo. Kidogo. A little. Kidogo. La, siongei kingereza. No, I don't speak English. La, siongei kingereza. Since la siongei kingereza is a negative statement, we need to say la first, followed by si before the verb, and an e at the end of the verb. Also note that the verb ongei is slightly different from ongea. This is because negating in Swahili depends on the pronoun and the tense. In this example, the first person prefix C is used before the verb and the suffix E is used at the end of the verb. As you can see, negation in Swahili follows a particular pattern. Some negations though require the word no, but we will talk about this in a later lesson. Now it's time for Medina's insights. For those of you who speak languages other than English, this question still works. 
just substitute Kiingereza with a different language. Here are some examples. Kitalia is Italian. Kirusi is Russian. Kispania is Spanish. And Kijerumani is German. In this lesson, we mentioned the expression Samahani, but did you know that this can also be used as an apology? We'll be learning this in the next lesson, as well as other ways to apologize in Swahili. It's never too late to show your good manners to Kenyans. So, I'll see you in our next Kiswahili kwa dakika tatu. See you next time. Kwaheri! Habari ya subuhi. Mzuri mwenzangu, lakini nilikuona wapi? Kwa majina naitwa Fatuma Ali. Nami naitwa Mohamed Joroge. Niko na furaha kukujua. Nimefurahia pia. Nimetumwa na rafiki yako nije nikuone. Haya basi, nikusaidiaje? Hamjamboni, mimi ni Medina. Hi everybody, I'm Medina. Welcome to SwahiliPod101.com's Kiswahili kwa dakika tatu. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Swahili. This lesson will be all about nambari. That's right. That means numbers. First, we'll learn the numbers from 1 to 10. They're not difficult at all. And this lesson will only take three minutes. Kwa dakika tatu, two. Are you ready? Let's start. Moja. Moja. Mbili. Mbili. Tatu. Tatu. Nne. Nne. Tano. Tano. Sita. Sita. Saba. Saba. Nane. Nane. Tisa. Tisa. Kumi. Kumi. Okay, now repeat after me. I'll say the numbers and give you time to repeat each one. Moja. Mbili. Tatu. Nne. Tano. Sita. Saba. Nane. Tisa. Kumi. Great job! If you're wondering what comes before moja, namely zero, it is sufuri in Swahili. Sufuri. It's quite easy to remember, right? Now, there's no need to panic if your new Kenyan friend asks for your cell phone number. Let's practice how you'll say it. We'll use the phrase, nambari yangu ni, which means, my number is. Nambari yangu ni. Sufuri, saba, mbili, tatu, nne, nane, saba, tisa, sita, tano. Can you read it by yourself? Sufuri, saba, mbili, tatu, nne, nane, saba, tisa, sita, tano. Perfect. Now, it's time for Medina's insights. Kenyans consistently pronounce these numbers as they appear. So, it's easy to master them. These numbers are used to name other bigger numbers. So, this saves you the energy of having to start over again. Keep at it, because the advantages of mastering these first 10 numbers will become clear as we continue our lessons. Do you know the Swahili word for 100? In the next lesson, we are going to learn the numbers 11 to 100 in Swahili. Before jumping in, be sure to practice the numbers we learned in this lesson from moja to kumi. Tuonane. Asante sana kwa kuja kuniona hospitalini. Karibu sana. Nilivyosikia umejifungua mapacha, niliamua lazima nije. Ah, na shukuru. Nimekuletea zawadi. 
zingine za hawa watoto na zingine zako. Asante sana mwenzangu. Nashukuru. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.